What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, aka Allfires. We just got the brand new trailer for Miss Marvel and there are a ton of Easter eggs packed in here, but some of the stuff I want to talk about isn't Easter eggs at all. In fact, you can see it right here, all the drawing on top of the screen, and I know a lot of you who remember Scott Pilgrim vs. The World or even some other formalist takes on superheroes are going to like this stuff, but for the MCU that has chosen not to do this, keep grounded in realism and stay away from formalism as much as they can this trailer broke that wide open i know some of you are wondering what the hell i am talking about i'm going to explain it all as well as the easter eggs packed into this trailer what's going on with this character and two huge changes it looks like it made to her character not only in her origin but what's going on with her power set as well we're also going to talk a little bit about where miss marvel fits in the mcu where this project fits what it's leading towards and why it's going to feel so different and be so different than say the upcoming moon knight or some of the films we expected from the infinity saga we're breaking down everything in this very first trailer for miss marvel but first if you could grab the subscribe button we do daily marvel content at the channel and that's all we do everything from official easter Easter egg breakdowns, trailers, reviews, things like we're doing today, all the way to industry insider scoops and everything in between. So, if that sort of thing's for you, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, that'll automatically enter you to win all the rest of the giveaways here at the channel, like the ongoing PS5 giveaway. All you gotta do, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. So the Easter eggs start at the very beginning of the trailer, that's where we'll start as well. She's definitely scribbling in her high school notebook that she's got an essay due, include reference quotes, you guys remember school, but then if you look on the bottom right hand page, she sees Ant-Man meeting man ant now ironically there is a man spider who is a horrible reverse of spider-man but she's doing it with ant-man here she's very aware of the avengers and superheroes and then as they scroll out up past this book and past her other books what happens to be sitting on top except for a world history book that shows a sarcophagus and a bunch of hieroglyphs yes i've seen the recent reports about moon knight being insular not connected to the mcu i've got my thoughts on that coming in a later video this week but this is definitely just a slight reference reference and nod to everything we're going to be seeing Egypt base in the upcoming Moon Knight that's literally two weeks away. Now what happens next to me is the craziest thing to have happened in the MCU for a while. We transfer to the Marvel Studios logo but as that happens it's animated. Now we're in a frame like an actual comic book panel with word bubbles and everything drawn animation on top of the screen. This is able to frame her point of view, how she sees other characters, and how this is playing out in her own head with her own narration. But what what we're watching on screen is a delving into formalism in a way that the MCU refused to do during the Infinity Saga. Please let me explain. When I say formalism in film, I don't mean formal like a black tie. I mean formal as in using the form of film to help tell a story. And throughout the 20th century, going into this next century, film, especially in the United States but worldwide, has trended towards realism, which is basically the opposite of formalism. The more realistic a film is, the more farther away it is from elements like drawn on comic panels or using the form of film to help tell the story it's grounded in realism and for the mcu one of its biggest pillars of success was taking something like marvel superhero stories and grounding them in enough realism that we could all buy in Early on in the MCU, when formalist directors like Edgar Wright tried to take on Ant-Man, remember Edgar Wright did Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which makes me wonder if that nod at the beginning of this trailer was on purpose. He actually went separate ways with Marvel Studios. They were not trying to do formalism at all. But now here we are, it's 2022. I don't know what number Marvel project this is with the shows included. Might be close to number 30 at this point, and they are doing full-on formalism using animated form on top of the scenes and shots to denote her point of view, and I can and assume we're going to see that throughout the entirety of this series. Now when her classmate makes fun of her Avengers shirt, she starts by calling her Kamala, to which she quickly and quietly responds Kamala. That's really correcting all of us who have been using her name wrong the entire time. And then what follows is some very serious meta commentary, not only what's going on in her head and her perspective in the show, but also what's going on with the series as a greater whole in the MCU. When she makes the comment, it's really not Pakistani Muslim girls from Jersey City who saved the world, she's talking about both inside and outside of the show. In the MCU, in this show, she doesn't see herself amongst the Avengers that she idolizes, but really, in mainstream media, it's the same thing. Muslim religion in general has just been completely marginalized and very rarely seen, and when it is, it's usually villainized. So this is really working both ways, not only inside the show, but outside the show, 
for inclusion and bringing the first Muslim superhero to the MCU and then for her to try to display what that otherness feels like inside the show. Now the next part of this trailer basically shows us how she gets her power set and it's different from the comics or at least a little bit. You can get a clear shot of this bracelet right here she's putting on. It looks like tarnished gold or brass. It's got two green stripes on either side of what looks like a sun or a flower logo in the middle. And as she presses it, it basically powers up the same way we've seen from the Power Stone and her eyes power up the same way we've seen other Marvels power up before, both in Carol Danvers and Monica Rambeau. Now in the comics, she gets her power set from Terrigen Mist and I don't think it's any coincidence we see Mist pour through the window moments later, presumably after after she's found this bracelet, we then see Mist later on in the trailer with four mysterious characters, and I think it's pretty safe to say that these are Inhumans. Her original comic book origin was that she had some latent Inhuman lineage that was basically amplified when she was exposed to a Terrigen bomb, again with that Terrigen mist. They've talked a little bit about changing how her origin would go down, and of course, the Inhumans were a horribly failed TV show. Um, I could see why they'd want to distance themselves as much as possible from that property, but with a reboot of those characters, perhaps coming back into the MCU and in this moment, that's my most likely bet for who these are. Now, speaking of changing her power set a little bit, her embiggening is one of her most common and well-known traits. When I think of Miss Marvel, I think of the huge fists. And they showed that a little bit in this trailer, but they've modified it to look more like cosmic power than her actual origin from the comics, which she would draw from herself across the multiverse. Yes, different versions of her all adding to, say, her fist at one time, drawing from them to make her fist bigger. I think they've sort of changed it to put it more in line with what happened with Carol Danvers, what happened with Monica Rambeau, so that their power sets match up a little bit more in origin and match up a little more visually for when we all see them on screen in the Marvels. Now take a good look at this person right here in the back right hand corner, the way he's got sleeves underneath a cutoff, the way that his clothes end there at the knees. Then let's shoot back to this scene right here of these four characters in the mist. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that these are the same people. Maybe she's not sure who they are to begin with. They're approaching her to talk about her powers, where they come from and who she is. She thinks they're villains at first. So I'm assuming that if those are in humans, this is another look at them here fighting against her during this scene. While I could be wrong, these clothes are pretty indicative that it's at least in this case, the same person. And then what we see throughout the rest of the trailer looks like her embracing her power set and her role. We see her using an energy shield and having her actual costume. And I love this, her throwing her hands up and saying, I'm a superhero and running away. That reminded me of Tom Holland's Peter Parker wanting to become an Avenger so bad. And speaking of which, this last shot of her in the trailer with the city in the background sitting on top of a streetlight really invoked all the Spider-Man vibes in the world for me. Guys, this show is definitely going to be meant to be a kid's show aimed at a very much different audience than say where they're going to aim Moon Knight. And that's okay. The MCU has so many projects at this point, they can afford to do a formalistic kids bench show leading into the Young Avengers. But just keep that in mind as you may, you know, start to watch this show and wonder if it's not speaking to you. There are a lot of young Marvel fans who really don't have anything specifically for them. While this will work in concert with the greater MCU, and I believe we will see Miss Marvel quite a bit going forward, they've definitely gone all in on her and other marquees like the comics and the video games. But also remember, this is for kids. It's leading into a Young Avengers and is going to be a different kind of Marvel project than, say, Moon Knight or what we expect from an upcoming Daredevil reboot you guys get the point. But let me know all your thoughts down below. Are you hyped for the show? What do you think is going on with those Inhuman characters? And uh, any Easter eggs I missed, because I know there are going to be plenty more in here, drop them down in the comics. We'll probably do an Easter egg redo here at some point like we normally do. Either way, let's jump into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, we're still giving away PlayStation 5s every 20,000 subscribers all the way up to a million. The next one's at 960. We're also giving away comics and exclusives over on my Instagram. You can see my handle down there in the bottom right-hand corner at I'm Fires. If you want to be entered for any of the giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button because you need to be a subscriber, then leave a comment down below. And because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me over on Instagram and Twitter at I am Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, wherever you listen to original music under the name All Fires. And while I'd sincerely appreciate you checking that out, thanks for checking 
checking this channel out, stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon. And on the 17th, we'll have the initial uh, reactions to the first, what sounds like four episodes of Moon Knight. There'll be no spoilers there, but I'll have those up for you guys ASAP.